This eagle suddenly took the old man's grandson away. The reason left everyone in shock in the mountains of North America. A man named Franz Smith lived a quiet and nature-connected life. One day, his life took an unexpected turn when an eagle he had saved and cared for suddenly took away his grandson during a family celebration. When they learned the reason behind this, everyone was left in shock. Do you want to know what it was? Stay with me. This story I'm about to tell you takes place in the majestic mountains of North America, where snow-capped peaks stand proudly. Amidst these mountains is a small corner of serenity and natural beauty. This place is surrounded by a green and fertile valley and a dense, lush forest that harbors a variety of wildlife. From hopping rabbits to majestic deer, it's a place of tranquility, a sanctuary away from the hustle and bustle of urban life. Here is where Fran Smith's house is located. A middle-aged man with a gray beard and eyes filled with wisdom and kindness. Frank is a married man whose love for his wife is only surpassed by the love he feels for the lands his family has cared for generations. His adult children have moved to the city in search of new opportunities, leaving Frank and his wife in the tranquility of their mountain home. Throughout his life, Frank has been a caretaker of nature, a man who has dedicated his time and effort to caring for and raising various animals, just like his father and his father before him did many years ago. From sheep grazing in the meadows to rabbits hiding in the thickets. Each creature has been a part of his life in one way or another. But one day, he would receive a great surprise that would leave him with an important lesson in his life. While searching for a hare to vary his daily routine, the man ventured into the forest with his old shotgun slung over his shoulder. The fresh morning air filled his lungs as he confidently and steadily advanced along the familiar trail. Suddenly, a strange sound caught his attention. Following the noise, Frank came across a sight that broke his heart. An injured eagle lay on the ground, its wing clearly damaged. Poor creature, Frank murmured. Cautiously approaching the eagle, the eagle looked at him with its golden eyes filled with fear and pain. Don't worry, I won't hurt you, Frank assured in a low voice. Slowly extending his hand towards the bird. Carefully, Frank wrapped the eagle in his jacket. Trying not to cause it any more pain. The eagle didn't struggle. In fact, it seemed like Frank was trying to help it. Come on, friend, Frank said gently. Lifting the eagle in his arms. Let's go, we'll take you home, and we'll fix that wing. And so with the eagle in his arms. Frank began the journey back home. Determined to do everything possible to help the injured creature. Upon arriving home. Frank placed the eagle in a quiet and safe space. With skilled hands and a heart full of compassion. He began treating the eagle's wound. He carefully cleaned the damaged wing. Applied medicine and bandaged it delicately. Throughout the process. The eagle watched Frank with attentive and bright eyes. In the days and weeks that followed, Frank cared for the eagle with unwavering dedication. He provided food and water, and monitored its progress with a watchful eye. As time passed, a deep and meaningful connection began to form between these two beings. Frank would talk to the eagle, sharing stories about his life and his love for the mountains. In return, the eagle would observe him with a quiet intensity, its silent presence offering a kind of companionship that Frank appreciated. However, these animals don't belong to homes. They belong to nature. And Frank understood this well. So, when the day came that the eagle was strong enough to fly again, Frank took her outside, his heart filled with a mixture of joy and sadness. He knew it was time to let her go. To allow her to soar the mountains they both loved. With one last glance at Frank. The eagle spread her wings and soared into the air. Returning to her home in the sky. 
Frank watched until she became a small dot in the distance. Feeling a sense of peace and satisfaction. But the story didn't end there. When the eagle had returned to the mountains. She continued to visit her savior and his wife. Every few days, she would perch on a nearby tree. Watching the couple with her golden eyes. Sometimes, she even joined Frank on his walks through the forest. Flying above him as he walked. The connection between Frank and the eagle never faded. In their friendship, they found a mutual understanding. A bond that transcended words. Through his care and kindness. Frank had gained a friend in the eagle. A friendship that would continue in the years to come and would. In fact, be crucial in saving his family. Months after Frank's encounter with the eagle. The Smith family received a new blessing, Albert. Frank's grandson, was born in the big city. His parents decided to bring him to the mountains to meet his grandparents. Look at that. Albert, Frank said. Holding the little one in his arms as he sat on the porch of his house. These are the mountains. Where your grandpa has lived his whole life, and someday. I'll teach you all about them. Just like I did with your father. Right at that moment. A familiar cry echoed in the air. Frank looked up to see the eagle soaring in circles above. They and that eagle are very special friends, Frank said. Pointing to the eagle. She's also a part of these mountains. The eagle descended and perched on a nearby branch. Observing the newborn Albert with curiosity. It seemed as though she was greeting the little one. A silent yet meaningful welcome to the family. That night. The Smith family celebrated Albert's arrival with a grand feast. Laughter and joy filled the air. As everyone gathered to celebrate the new addition to the family. From her perch in the tree. The eagle observed the celebration with watchful eyes. However, as the night progressed. The eagle began to behave strangely. She emitted unusual cries and flapped her wings. Frank, who had been watching the eagle felt a sense of unease. Something wasn't right. And then the unimaginable happened. The eagle suddenly launched herself from her perch. And flew toward the gathering. To everyone's astonishment. She grabbed the blankets holding Albert with her talons. And flew away with him. Frank's heart stopped as he watched the eagle carry away his grandson. The festive atmosphere came to an abrupt halt replaced by a chilling silence. Then, as one unit, the Smith family sprang into action. Frank, his children, and the others ran after the eagle, shouting and waving their arms in a desperate attempt to make the bird release the child. Chaos and fear swirled in the air. The eagle, the creature Frank had cared for, and come to consider a friend, had taken his grandson. He couldn't comprehend it. How could the bird that had shown so much gratitude and friendship now turn against them in this way? Fear for Albert's safety mixed with a sense of betrayal. He had trusted the eagle. He had opened his home and his heart to her. And now it seemed like all of that had been in vain. But deep within his heart, a small part of him refused to believe that the animal could harm them. Something didn't add up. Something he didn't understand. Then the earth began to tremble. A deafening roar filled the air. As the mountains behind Frank's house began to crumble. Large rocks and soil cascaded downward. Heading directly for the Smith family's home. Frank and his family froze. Watching in horror as their home was destroyed by the landslide. The house that had been the Smith family's sanctuary for. Generations was reduced to rubble in a matter of seconds. But then, from the sky, the eagle returned. She descended gently and placed Albert safely on the ground. The family rushed to him. Embracing him and shedding tears of relief. Frank turned to the eagle. His eyes filled with awe and gratitude. You knew, he said. 
his voice filled with astonishment. You knew this was going to happen. And you took Albert to safety. You saved everyone. The eagle simply looked at him. Her golden eyes shining with an intelligence that seemed almost human. Then, with one final cry. She soared into the sky and disappeared from view. From that day on. Frank and his family never forgot the debt they owed to the eagle. Despite their home being destroyed. They were alive and safe thanks to the timely intervention of the eagle. This was today's video. We hope you really enjoyed it. But now it's your turn to answer these questions. And participate in the discussion. What did you learn from this story? Did you like what the eagle did to save the family's life? Dogs are close companions of children. They are often very friendly to children. Dogs can teach children many things. Therefore, when a mother has to leave for a while, she leaves her dog with her children. She believed that the dog would not hurt her child, and even take good care of her for herself. But she didn't expect to see the dog carrying the girl. When her mother came back, why do dogs have girls in their mouths? What makes dogs change their temperament? Catherine and her newborn daughter Charlotte live together. And they live alone. Mother and daughter can be said to be dependent on each other. Catherine is a loving mother. In order to give her daughter the best life. She works hard. Although she is materially guaranteed. There is no family around their house. Which is quiet and lonely. Which is extremely unfavorable to her daughter's psychological growth. And she sometimes feels lonely. Catherine thought about it. And thought that the only solution was to have a dog. She liked dogs and had dogs all her life. When she grew up, Catherine thanked them for their happiness and their unconditional love. So one day, shortly after Charlotte's first birthday, Catherine went to the rescue center to find them a pet dog. Catherine was deeply touched by the number of homeless dogs in the rescue center. But there was nothing she could do. She could only keep one pet. So she finally decided to keep a big and strong pet. Four-year-old Doberman. This dog named Khan is huge. Strong physique. Although it doesn't look like a perfect family pet. Catherine is well aware that these dogs are often unpopular. And they have a reputation for danger and violence. Which is why they are usually used as police dogs or god dogs. But it is unfair to put them all in one category. Not all Dobermans are like this. And some are friendly, stupid and interesting. Just to observe Khan's reaction to her. Catherine could see that there was no violent factor in his body. The staff of the rescue center advised her not to adopt Khan. Saying that he was too big and probably dangerous. Especially for a one-year-old child. But Catherine insisted that this was their dog. And this dog would become a part of their family. She did not know why she had such a feeling. That from the moment she met Khan. Catherine felt that Khan belonged to their family. Sure enough, Catherine's hunch was right. And Khan soon adapted to life here as if at home. Despite being a large dog, he was gentle and calm. And everything went well when Catherine let him interact with Charlotte. Because Charlotte is very small. Khan will become quite gentle when acting. Just like caring for a fragile jade. She didn't understand. What those people in the rescue center had been worried about. Clearly, Khan was identified as a difficult dog to tame. Only because of his breed. But with proper love and training. He would make a good family dog. Sometimes Charlotte wanted to sit and play in the garden. Catherine took her outside. They sat on the grass. Charlotte played on the grass and Con watched in the shade. It was really a quiet and warm scene. Catherine was very satisfied with this life. And was very glad that she had adopted Con. At last it was lunchtime. And Charlotte needed to eat. Catherine got up from the grass. Jogged to the kitchen. 
and quickly prepared some food for both of them. My daughter just sat on the grass and played with the ball. There was no danger around. And everything seemed safe. This scene was repeated countless times. But Catherine would still carefully check. For any potential danger around her. Fortunately, everything seemed to be safe. She left Charlotte in place. Probably for only one minute. And she felt that nothing would happen for one minute. Unfortunately she was wrong. And when she came out ready for their meal. Catherine was stunned. Shocked and horrified by what she had witnessed. And Khan had already jumped out of the shade. And ran to Charlotte, biting the baby's diaper with his teeth. And then pulling her back. Moving her a few feet out of the garden. Charlotte was startled by Khan's sudden action. And burst into tears instantly. Catherine could not believe that. Khan would attack the defenseless baby. And seeing her child hurt. Catherine ran screaming towards the dog. And the food on the plate fell to the ground. And she drove Khan with a kitchen knife. And she was so angry that. She felt she would kill the dog if Khan continued to attack her child. In just a few tens of seconds. Catherine's mind flashed all kinds of thoughts. How could she be so wrong? Why did she think that? This Doberman's character would not cause harm to her children. She felt that if she didn't stop it in time. Her children might suffer irreparable harm because of Khan. Catherine, who heard Khan shouting. Picked up Charlotte, who was in tears. And then walked slowly towards the house. Still wielding her knife. And her eyes were fixed on Khan for fear that he might try to attack again. But suddenly the dog let out a slight whimper. And then collapsed on the ground. Looking as if in great pain. Catherine was puzzled, but just then she found something strange. And just beside the spot where Khan had fallen there was a snake. Whose color made it blend with the hay. But it was bent, and it looked as if it was ready to attack. Suddenly Catherine understood everything. And Charlotte must be walking towards the snake. Khan noticed this and used his own strength to keep Charlotte away from danger. Which showed that Khan did not mean to hurt Charlotte. But did it to save her. Catherine put down her knife in shame. Thinking that she was going to kill the poor dog if necessary. And that all Khan had done was to protect her daughter. Then something suddenly occurred to her again. That Khan had just screamed not as a provocation. But was bitten by a snake, a golden brown snake. Which was very common in Australia. And, though not fatal to an adult. Was likely to kill a dog or a child. Khan must be treated immediately. Catherine straps Charlotte to her car seat. Then they quickly go to the vet. But will Khan survive? No one can be sure. Even Khan himself doesn't know. Because at that time. It only wanted to save Charlotte. For Charlotte, it was attacked by poisonous snakes. And misunderstood by Catherine. They arrived at the vet. Who immediately gave Khan an anti-venom shot in the hope. That they did it in time. But it was a game of waiting. And Khan had to be locked up in the house for the night and monitored. If that poor Doberman doesn't survive tonight. Catherine may break down. Because she can't forgive her misunderstanding of Khan. It was indeed a long night. Full of anxiety and no sleep. But the next morning came. And in spite of all the difficulties Khan survived. And his size and weight played a great role. Catherine wept with joy at the sight of her being able to survive. Although she had not slept all night. She was very energetic at the moment. After this life and death battle. Catherine trusted Khan more. And she knew that Khan would never hurt her children. At the same time. She also took more care of Khan to. Make up for her previous injury to Khan's heart. They became a real family. Which was inseparable from Khan's loyalty. Both. Sobbing and howling. 
suddenly approached a man. However, he later realized that she was in great distress. The story takes place along the Keo River. On Cooper's North Island in southeastern Alaska. A man who ventured out alone in search of gold. Unexpectedly encountered a surprising scene. For this man. The beginning of this day was no different from usual. As he walked along a creek. He emerged from the forest and found himself on an icy path. Less than twenty steps away from him. A massive Alaskan wolf stood there. Yet. The man quickly noticed. That this wolf was trapped in a predicament. Its leg was caught in an old trap. A trap set by his recently deceased friend. He knew that if he didn't free the wolf. It was destined to perish in the trap. The man cautiously approached the wolf. Which was attempting to retreat. But he also noticed some other details, the wolf was female. Her teeth were stained with milk. Indicating that she had recently given birth. Somewhere nearby. A hungry litter of pups awaited their mother's return for nourishment. Judging by the wolf's condition. The man speculated that she had been trapped for several days. He understood that the pups would soon need food to survive. The man couldn't free the mother wolf before searching for her pups. So he decided to look for the wolf cub's tracks in the nearby forest. He began searching for any clues. That could lead him to the den of the wolf mother. Fortunately, there were still a few patches of snow on the ground. After a few minutes. He found a faint. Insect surrounded trail. This trail guided him through the forest and up a rocky slope. Eventually. He successfully located the den. Nestled beneath a massive spruce tree. Four wolf cubs cautiously emerged from the den. The man observed closely and estimated that. They were no more than a few weeks old. One by one. He placed them into a coarse burlap sack. And then returned to the slope. When he returned to where the mother wolf was trapped. She immediately took notice of the man's presence. She stood up straight. Trying to move forward by about an inch. Emitting a loud howl. As if she knew what was in the sack. Longing to reunite with her cubs. As the man released the cubs. They quickly ran to the mother wolf's side. Beginning to suckle the milk from her mouth. The man watched with joy as they reunited with their family. While the wolf mother was distracted caring for her pups. The man attempted to approach them. But the female wolf's gaze immediately locked onto him. And she began emitting threatening growls. The man faced a dilemma about. How to assist these trapped animals. As the she-wolf had her children to protect. And she had become fiercely defensive. Revealing her sharp fangs whenever the man tried to come closer. After considering several options. The man came to a conclusion, just like her cubs. The wolf mother was likely feeling hungry too. If she was trapped. She couldn't hunt for food. The man decided that he had to find her some food. This was not only to help her but also. With the hope of building some trust with her. He walked to a nearby creek and found a dead deer. Covered by snow but with one leg exposed. He cut off a quarter of the deer's body. And then returned to the mother wolf's side. As he re-entered the open area. The mother wolf's attention was clearly fixed on the man. As if she knew he had brought something. The man cut the deer meat into pieces. And tossed them in the direction of the wolf. She sniffed at first. Then quickly devoured the meat. When all the food was gone. The man fashioned himself a makeshift resting spot. And soon drifted into slumber. At dawn. He was awakened by four furry paws. Gently touching his face and hands. He glanced at the restless mother wolf. And began pondering how to help her. He knew that if he could gain the trust of these animals. He might eventually free her. Over the next few days. The explorer divided his time between exploration. 
and winning the mother wolf's trust. He spoke softly to her, tossed her more deer meat, and played with her wolf cubs. Gradually, he began to approach the adult wolf, always careful to keep a safe distance. Yet her black eyes remained fixed on him. As time went on, he noticed that in front of him, she seemed to be growing increasingly calm. On the evening of the fifth day, the man once again brought the daily deer meat to the mother wolf. Suddenly, the wolf cubs joyfully bounded toward him. Despite having gained the trust of the young wolf cubs, he was disheartened by his inability to assist the mother wolf. However, in a sudden moment, he noticed a slight wagging of the mother wolf's tail. He decided to take a risk and slowly walked closer. Staying within the range of the chain, the mother wolf remained still. When he was about 8 feet, approximately 2.4 meters, away from her, he cautiously sat down. He knew that getting too close could result in her massive jaws snapping and potentially breaking his arm or neck. Nevertheless, the man was determined to help the mother wolf. He wrapped himself in a blanket and slowly lay down on the cold ground. After a long while, he finally drifted into a deep sleep. At dawn, he was awakened by the nursing sounds of the wolf cubs. He gently pushed them away with his hand, which made the mother wolf anxious. Yet she didn't take further action. The man regarded this as a positive sign, and he gently placed his hand on the injured leg of the animal. Now closer than ever, he could see that the trap had caught only two of the mother wolf's toes, indicating that her condition was not dire. As long as the trap could be opened, she should recover. The man quickly located the spring and successfully released the trap. Once freed, the mother wolf immediately leaped out of the trap and began pacing around, readjusting to the sensation of freedom. After being rescued, the mother wolf cautiously approached the man, sniffed him, lightly licked him, then turned and left, limping into the woods with her cubs. However, before disappearing, she looked back as if inviting the explorer to follow her. The man understood her intent, and slowly trailed behind the small family for several miles. They continued toward Mount Kopanov eventually ascending to the high alpine meadows. At the mountain summit, a pack of wolves had gathered around the forest. And the man counted them, there were a total of nine adult wolves. With four of them being nearly full-grown. Based on their playful actions. After a few minutes of mutual observation, the entire pack suddenly began to howl. Creating an otherworldly symphony of deep mournful tones and soaring crescendos, the sounds intertwining with one another. That evening, the man set up camp by the edge of the meadow, lit a campfire, and observed many wolves moving back and forth around him. However, he felt no fear, as he understood that these animals were simply curious about him. The next day, the man knew it was time to leave. He packed up his camp, and the mother wolf watched his every move. As he walked to the other side of the meadow, he glanced back and saw the mother wolf and her cub sitting where he had just been, watching him. The mother wolf then let out a long howl before leading her pack into the depths of the forest. Four years later, the man returned to the same creek in the autumn of 1945. After the horrors of war, he revisited the towering spruce forest, breathing in the fresh air of the Alaskan underbrush, walking along the creek's edge. There, he found the trap that had once held the mother wolf, still in the spot where it had been when he left many years ago. Seeing this trap, the explorer was overcome with a strange emotion. This peculiar emotion compelled him to cross the mountains and return to the meadow, where he had once encountered the wolf pack. Upon reaching the meadow, 
he let out a deep wolf howl. And surprisingly, the echo came back from a distance. Then, from afar, he saw a black figure slowly moving in his direction. As the figure crossed the meadow, he could make out that it was a familiar wolf. Even after four years, he recognized its silhouette. The wolf approached slowly, ears erect, body tense, then stopped a few yards away. Her thick tail began to sway gently. And after a while, as if she had never left the place, the mother wolf turned and walked away. The man smiled at the astonishing event that had just occurred. Before leaving the meadow, he turned around, never to see the animal again. However, the memory she left behind would stay with him forever. This story is filled with emotion and meaning, leaving one in deep contemplation. Feel free to share your thoughts on this story in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content. The wailing female wolf suddenly approached a man. But later he realized that she was in big trouble. This story takes place along the Koo River. On Cooper North Island in the southeast of Alaska. A man went out alone to find gold. He met with an amazing thing. For this man. The beginning of this day is like any other day. When he walks along the stream. He comes out of the forest and will only freeze on the track. There was a huge Alaska wolf not more than 20 steps away from him. But the man immediately noticed that the wolf was in trouble. One of its legs was caught in an old trap. Set by his recently deceased friend. He knew that if the wolf was left in the trap, it would die there. The man cautiously approached the wolf, who was trying to retreat. But the man noticed other things. The wolf was a female with milk on her teeth which meant that she had recently given birth to a baby. And there was a nest of hungry babies, waiting for their mother somewhere nearby. From the appearance of the wolf, the man guessed that she had been trapped for several days, and knew that the pups would need feeding soon if they could survive. The man couldn't let their mother escape to find them. He decided to look for the wolf pups in the nearby woods. He began to look for any clues that might lead him to the wolf mother's nest. Fortunately, there were still some pieces of snow on the ground. A few minutes later, the man found a faint trail full of insects. This trail led him through the forest, climbed the rocky slope, and finally climbed the slope. She found the cave, at the bottom of a huge spruce tree. The four wolf pups began to come out of the nest carefully, the man carefully examined them and guessed that they were several weeks old at most. One by one, he put them in a burlap bag and then returned to the slope. When he entered the empty space where the mother wolf haunted, she immediately found the man, stood up straight, leaned forward as far as possible about one centimeter, and she screamed all over as if she knew what was in the bag, and wanted to reunite with her children. When the man released the cubs, they all ran to their mother and began to drink milk from her teeth. The man looked at them and was glad that they could be reunited with their family. When the mother wolf distracted to feed her cubs, the man tried to approach them, but the female wolf's eyes immediately shot at him, and she began to growl menacingly. The man didn't know how to help the trapped animal next. With children to protect. She became belligerent. And every time the man tried to get close to her. He would show his tusks. The man considered his choice and came to the conclusion that. Like her children, the wolf mother might also be hungry. If she is trapped, she can't go hunting. The man decided that he had to help her find something to eat. Not only to help her but also to hope that she would start trusting him. He walked towards the stream, and found a dead deer with only one leg sticking out from the snow. He cut off a quarter of the back of the deer, 
and returned to the mother wolf. When he entered the open space again, the mother wolf's attention was obviously focused on the man, as if she knew what he had brought to her. The man cut the meat into pieces and threw the large piece of venison in the direction of the wolf. She smelled it and then wolfed it down. When all the food was finished, the man built a simple place for himself and soon fell asleep. At dawn, he was awakened by four furry fur belts. They sniffed his face and hands. He glanced at the restless wolf mother, and began to think of a plan to help her. If he can win the trust of animals, then he can finally save her. In the next few days, the explorers divided their time into two parts, and used it between exploration and winning the trust of the wolves. He talked gently with her, threw her more venison and played with her pups. Gradually, he kept getting closer to the adult wolf. However, he was careful to keep outside the length of the chain. The big animal never removed her black eyes from him. But as time passed, she seemed more and more calm in front of him. In the evening of the fifth day, the man brought daily venison to the mother wolf. Suddenly, the wolf pups jumped at him. Although the man won the trust of the young wolf pups, he began to lose hope of helping the mother wolf. Then suddenly, the man felt that he saw her tail swinging slightly. He decided to take risks and enter the length of the chain. The female wolf did not move. After reaching within eight feet, the man sat down carefully at a place two, four meters away from her. He was too close to her. And her huge jaw might break his arm or neck with a flick. Determined to help the mother wolf, the man wrapped his blanket around him and slowly slept on the cold ground. It took him a long time to fall asleep. But at last he fell asleep. The explorer woke up at dawn, and was awakened by the sound of the puppies breastfeeding. He gently leaned over and pushed them, which made the mother wolf stiff. But she did not do anything else. The man took this as a good sign. He gently put his hand on the injured leg of the animal. Now he is closer. He can see that the trap only catches the two toes of the female wolf. Which means that she should be very good if he can open the trap. The man quickly found the release spring and opened the trap. As soon as she was free, the wolf mother jumped out of the trap and began to wander around. She was used to moving again. When she was released, the wolf mother approached the man carefully, smelled him, and she gently licked him, then turned around, and then limped into the forest with her wolf pups, before disappearing completely. She turned to look for the prospector, as if she wanted him to follow her. The man understood, and slowly followed the small family a few miles behind them. They climbed the Kopanov mountain, until they reached the alpine meadow. There is a wolf group lurking around the forest. The man counted nine adult wolves. From their funny play actions, there are four approaching adults. After a few minutes of greeting, the wolves suddenly howled, which was a strange sound. From a low sob to a high roar. That night, the man set up a camp on the edge of the grass. When he lit a fire, he could see many wolves hiding in and out. However, he was not afraid because he knew that. Animals were just curious about him. The next day, the man knew that he should go. He packed up the camp. The mother wolf watched him do this. When the man walked to the other side of the grass, he looked back. The mother wolf and her cub sat. Where he left and looked at him. The mother wolf then gave out a long howl, and then disappeared into the forest with her wolves. Four years later, the man returned to the brook, which was the autumn of 1945. After the horror of war, it was good to return to the towering spruce bushes, 
breathing the fresh air of the familiar Alaska bushes. And walking along the brook. The man met the trap that he had rescued the mother wolf. It was in the place he left many years ago. Seeing it gave the explorer a strange feeling. This strange feeling made him want to climb these mountains. And go to the grassland where he saw wolves for the last time. When he reached the grass. The man made a long. Deep wolf howl. Surprisingly, the echo came back from afar. And then in the distance. He saw a dark shadow moving slowly in his direction. When it crossed the grass. He could see that it was a rolling wolf. He immediately recognized the familiar shape. Even after four years. The wolf slowly approached. His ears pricked up and his body tightened. And stopped a few yards away. Her thick tail began to swing slightly. And then, after a while, as if she had never been there, the mother wolf left. The man smiled because of the amazing thing that had just happened. Before turning around and leaving the grass, the man never saw the animal again. But the memory she left was always with him. Let me know your opinion on this story in the comments below. Don't forget to praise and subscribe to more wonderful content.